Hi, Sawyer. Hey. How are you? Good. good. Welcome to the Welcome to the Soil Valley Show. I am happy to be here. This is awesome. Thank you. You ready to get started? Sure. Sorry, oh. I was a few minutes late. No, it's okay. No problem. Um, could you could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you and what your connection is to the IDD community? Sure. So I. Uh, my name is Amber and I, I've worked in transition for, this is my seven, 16th or 17th year, and that is working with 18 to 21 year olds in the school districts. So I started in Portland for 11 years and then came to Bend, Oregon, um, and I'm working with 18 to 21 year olds on life skills, vocational skills, independent living skills, um, lots of fun stuff. Awesome. Um, so, question two: What do you believe a healthy and happy, healthy, a healthy and happy teacher-student working relationship should have? I think one of the most important things that I've learned over the years is that what makes a happy student is one that um, where the classroom setting allows for a lot of choice and allows for the student to make decisions for themselves and allows them to be their own self-advocate. I think when a student doesn't have those kinds of things, um, they're not as happy and they don't learn as much either um, if, they're, if they're not able to be a member of the team. The most important member of the team really um, is the student. So basically what you're saying, the follow-up question on that is basically if they're not kind of allowed to, I guess, if they're kind of not allowed to kind of like do what's best for them working wise, sort of, if they're just kind of like, not kind of like, not wanna, I don't want to say like loyal soldier type of thing, but they're just like, they're kind of like, you're not part of the team. So I guess just so that what you're saying is so they can have like their own like say kind of like in what they want moving forward kind of thing. Exactly. I think, um, I think when we let students be in the driver's seat, especially once they're 18, they're an, an adult, um, they, should, they should be taking more of a, a role in making decisions for their own life. I think it's really empowering for students and it's, it's different than maybe they have experienced in middle school or high school. And so there's more growth there. I think another thing I've learned is to allow students to make mistakes because sometimes we shield students from making mistakes, parents and teachers alike. And they say that the most learning that happens is when we fail. And I just feel strongly that everyone should be allowed to pursue something, even if the parents or teachers think they're not going to achieve that. Or um, I think by failing, we, we learn and um, it, can, it can lead us in new directions and yeah. Failure is okay. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. yeah. So question three, what are some of the obstacles you have faced in your chosen profession? Obstacles, let's see. Um, I think um, some of the obstacles are the, I feel there's this kind of constant conflict between um, uh, the paperwork side of the job and the hands-on side of the job. And, and sometimes the paperwork demands more attention than I would really like because I, um, I like to be around students more than I like to be in front of a computer. <laughs> um, that's one challenge of the job, I think. Yeah. So question four, um, this is kind of a big one. Um, why should legislators and our local officials be more interested in our community? That's a great question. Um, I think things have really improved um, even in my short time in this field. Um, but I think, I think there's a lot more work to be done. I think that I won't be completely content until people with disabilities truly have um, equal access to the workforce and jobs and um, accommodations in job settings. And 
um, healthcare access, um, access to healthy relationships and uh, classes and curriculum in schools. And, and I think there's a there's still um, there's still some things that we need to change um, as parents and and local officials and people really high up as well. Yeah, those kind of the still, I mean, we're moving forward in the right direction, but there's still kind of a stigma. We, for some reason, we still can't get rid of it. There's still, that, you know, your super smart or super dumb stigma, which we're trying to get rid of, but we can't, for some reason, change people's minds completely. And that's kind of what gets a little sad a little bit. It really is, because um, you and I both know that that's just not true. Um, and that kind of grouping people in those two categories just isn't um, isn't reflective of what's really going on. And um, I think we kind of measure intelligence, and we think it's like oh, math and reading and and those kinds of things. But I think we're finding out about even students who don't have experience disability. There's all kinds of intelligences that we all have. Um, it's not just reading, writing, and math. And, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, I think, I think we really need to change our thinking about um, the rights of people with disabilities and in terms of their right to uh, have children, to marry, to be educated about those kind of things. And because um, that's been an area where there's a lot of need for people to change their minds. Can you talk a little bit more about that since I didn't really, because that's kind of something that we're very familiar with, I guess. So Yeah. I guess. So I teach, you know, a healthy relationships class and um, about every other year and just went to a training recently where uh, there were rights of people with disabilities listed um, from the ARC. Um, that organization, and then also the World Health Organization, where people are starting to stand up and say, hey, people with disabilities have the same desires that everyone else does in terms of relationships. Um, maybe some of them want that, maybe some of them don't, but it's very normal and healthy for people to, to have those uh, desires for connection. And how, how are we meeting that need? Are we teaching people the skills and the classes that they need to have those kind of relationships in their life? Or are people like saying, well, people with disabilities don't, don't have those same needs. So that's not true, you know? So that's one of the areas that I'm passionate about. Yeah, in my opinion is kind of like, as my mom likes to say, just let us choose our own path. And if, if obviously, we, like you said, we make the mistake, we make the mistake, but just let us make the mistake. Don't try to make it for us, type of thing. Exactly. Absolutely. So, so um, question six. What are personal goals you have for the future? Um, let's see, in terms of like my my field and my job? Well, I guess whatever. Well, okay. kind of your job, whatever you want, kind of. Okay. Uh, let's see. So one thing I like to, I'm trying to think of, um, well, one thing I think I'm always working on is trying to um, connect students to resources in their communities. Um, I'd like to, to get more knowledgeable about the mental health supports and, that are available to students. There's a lot of students because of COVID that have experienced so, some mental health stuff, some more than others and some you would say crisis situations. And so just, I'm just always trying to expand my knowledge of what's out there because I can't wear every hat or do fulfill every need that a student has. And that wouldn't really be beneficial to the student if I try to do everything and need to connect students to what resources they're gonna have after they leave our program. So. So that's one area I'd like to just get better at that. Kind of, I guess. Um, so my, my provider came over one day and I was talking to him. I'm like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to start a YouTube channel. My family literally, pop, my family kind of thought it was popping off a little bit. So I didn't really think of anything of it until literally my provider came over one day and she was, I was like, 
hey, I'm, you're the first interviewee. And so I kind of took, took off guard a little bit. But And so she was the first interview. And then the second interview um, was my, um, was Mark and Nikki, uh, some people, my um, agency I work um, that, that support me and everything. And basically I started this channel because um, I've been very lucky and fortunate that I did come from kind of a, kind of, I'm gonna wanna say that I come in a little bit of privilege due to my living on the South, living at Southwest, going to Wilson, getting to go to the transit, I mean, program, getting to go to TCIO, now working at Nike, obviously. And now, um, so I've been obviously very, very lucky that, um, that, that I'm, I'm not gonna lie, my mom, my mom with full connection of you know helped with it too so i'm very lucky and so what i'm tr this channel is trying to um kind of like give what everybody else in the industry sort of what i have sort of to help them sort of i can use my platform a little bit to kind of like help move the industry forward i guess that's amazing sawyer i'm 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 just impressed that you well first i want to say that a lot of a lot of where you are right now um, is because of you and you have an amazing support, amazing mom. Um, I really loved working with her and, and recognizing that you use the word privilege. Um, and that's great that you can recognize that, but you are, you have really created, your mom has helped you create your own path too. And you've put a lot of work in to get where you are. And just like this, you had this vision and this dream to do this. And that's awesome. Yeah, it was so. a lot of hard work and a lot of, basically what I've achieved is most like we just, it's not really talent, I would say it's hard work and just most, a lot of determination, maybe maybe a little bit over determination, but still determination is sort of, yeah. What advice would you give to, to students that are, how, uh, how old are you now? If you, 26? Yeah, sorry, 26. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, what advice would you give to students who are kind of in their transition years for, you know, looking ahead past school? Um, what kind of advice? Because you were, you seem like a really self-determined your person, you're a good self-advocate. Um, what advice do you have for for them? Maybe. Um, I guess for younger students, I'll just um, for younger students try to um, stick on your dream. Because my dream was obviously to be in sports and work in sports, but also allow allow life to kind of like, it happened with this, allow life to kind of like take its own path, kind of like knowing when, cause like I didn't, I would say possibly just stick to your guns a little bit, but let other people help you, but don't try to kind of do it the way you want. And if you fail, you fail, but that's kind of how I did it. And just, and I get it for some people, like I was when I forced into a TCIO and stuff, you're gonna be, it's kind of gonna be a new transition. You're not, at first you're kind of, kind of kind of fail because I didn't know what I was doing at first. And so, but eventually if you stay on your path and you kind of let life do its own thing, you, you'll eventually get there. So just hang in there and not get frustrated. I guess that's hard to do, but. I love that. So keeping, keeping your eye on that ultimate dream and being okay with like some mistakes and frustration along the way that is that's really smart and uh the key to success i think <laughs> obviously in my case with my anxiety getting bad and not being able to sleep and stuff allowing your mid being okay to talk about your mental health because um that is something that's kind of getting me a little bit with my anxiety being the you mean know, at the level that is so trying to i know it's hard and nobody wants to open up to a fail because I get it, but being okay on um, going to somebody and opening up, so. Absolutely. Yeah, it's something that a lot of people aren't comfortable with, but um, that's awesome advice. And um, yeah, just being okay with, okay with not being okay, right? Everybody's uh, struggles at some point in their life with something like that and being okay to talk about it. Yeah and get support. It's okay to ask for help, is what I hear you saying. Me, as you know, it as you know, it took me a very long time, a very long time, because you know, I wasn't the person I was going to ask for help. I was right. very shocked. Yeah. I'm going to be that person. It took me, and I'm still struggling with it now, but it took me a very, very, very long time to finally just be like, you know, I, you know, I'm going to need to ask for help. It's not, a, it's not a, 
peanuts like fat. It was, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of you, Sawyer. Yeah. You're, you're going to keep, I'm, and I'm not really a whole lot older than you well, about, yeah, I'm, yeah, I am, I guess about 15 years older than you, but you, I'm still growing and you're still growing. We all still learn and grow our whole lives. So, and you're really good at growing and learning. So never yes. stop that. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this interview. Yeah, this was great. So it's so good to see you. Hello. Yeah, tell your mom I said hi. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will.